Katie Nichol, and I am an educator at the Ringling Museum. Today, we are going to take a virtual tour through some of our artworks in the museum. Before we get started, you will need a few supplies on this tour. You will need a piece of paper and a pack of colored pencils, crayons, or markers. You can pause the video now to gather your supplies. Today, we're going to look at a few works of art. As we look, focus on the colors the artist has chosen to use. We'll talk about how these works of art make us feel, what message the colors send us, and how artists use color to affect the mood of a painting. We will be using our paper and colored pencils or markers or crayons to help us discover the mood and feeling of works of art. At the end of the tour, you will get a turn to design your own color palette and create a unique work of art. Our first work of art today is this portrait. A portrait is a work of art that is focused on a person, and it can be a painting like this one, or a sculpture, or even a photograph. This woman is Louise Elizabeth, Madame la Princesse de Conti, and she was important during her lifetime. Louise Elizabeth was related to the King of France, and she was wealthy and famous in her own right. Let's see what we can figure out about Louise Elizabeth based on what we can see in the painting. We'll begin with a moment of quiet looking. After a moment of looking at the portrait, I'm beginning to notice a few things about Louise Elizabeth. What are some things you see? Those are all great observations. Some of the things I have noticed are the two babies flying on either side of Louise Elizabeth. I'm noticing one has butterfly or moth wings, while the other has wings made of feathers. These surprising babies are actually Eros and Anteros, the sons of the Roman goddess Venus. Louise Elizabeth herself is dressed up as Venus, the goddess of love. Let's talk about the color palette in this painting. A palette is the colors that an artist uses when they make a work of art. The artist, Noel Nicolas Corbel, has used a light pastel palette. In this painting, I see light blue, delicate pink, soft white, and other gentle colors. The light palette makes me happy. This is a nice painting to spend some time observing. Let's make a color palette on our piece of paper. Using the colors you see in the painting, make a small square of each color kind of close together. This will help us remember the color palette used by the artist. What mood does this painting have for you? Write or draw that feeling right next to the color swatch. You can pause this video to complete your color palette. That was a lot of fun. Let's check out another painting in the museum, though this one isn't quite as light and bright. This painting is a landscape by the British artist Joseph Wright of Derby. A landscape is a painting of a scene of nature, a scene of the land. The landscape here is dark, it must be nighttime, and the light in the painting is coming from the moon. In the painting, we see a bridge crossing a river. On the bridge is a man leading a donkey. The donkey seems burdened with packages and goods and they are slowly crossing the river. I notice that I cannot see the moon itself. It's actually hidden behind the bridge. But I can see the light reflected in the sky and the water below. The bright colors used to create the moonlight are very different from the darker colors of the landscape surrounding the light. How would you describe the mood of this painting? We all have such different interpretations of this painting. This painting might feel calm and peaceful, or maybe the color palette could feel spooky or scary. Let's create a color palette on the same piece of paper we used before. I only have bright colors of crayons, so I'm going to very gently color black over top of the bright colors to make them darker and more like the painting. 
Don't forget to include a swatch of color for the moonlight. Next to your color palette, write down how you described the mood, whether it is calm or peaceful or scary or ominous. The last work of art we are going to look at today is by the Japanese artist Saito Kiyoshi. This is a modern work of art made in 1966, and the artist works in a style that doesn't look exactly like real life. The title of this work is called Winter in Paris, and the longer we look at this artwork, the more we can recognize some elements found in cities like Paris and with winter scenes. I'm noticing shapes that look like buildings and signs, trees, people, and even a black shape that looks like a dog. This work of art is a woodblock print, so it's different from the paintings we just looked at. Prints are made by smearing ink on a carved wooden block, then pressing the block onto a piece of paper. The ink creates the image of the block on the paper. The artist Saito Kiyoshu wanted the colors in this print to be saturated or deep and bold. If you look at the colors, they are rich and capture your attention. There are a lot of colors in this print. What mood or feeling do these colors give you? What do the individual colors like? red or blue or black make you feel or remember? How do all these colors together work to create the overall mood? All these colors and shapes and textures do make me think of winter in the city, just like the title of the print. The saturated colors on the right side of are busy and make me think of the hustle and bustle of the city. The black lines and patterns used to make the trees remind me of the cold of winter, and the large shapes that form the people make me think that they are wearing coats. Let's make a color swatch of this painting. We'll get to use many of our markers since there is all three primary colors shown. Next to your color swatch, you can write the mood or feeling this print gave to you. Now it's your turn. First, think about what mood or feeling you want your artwork to have. You can make an artwork that is happy or sad or lonely or confused or surprised, anything really. Second, once you have decided on your mood, use your colored pencils, markers, or crayons to create a color palette that matches the mood you chose. You can look back on our notes we made during this tour for ideas or for inspiration. Third, make your own work of art. Use the colors you included in your color palette to create a work of art that has the mood that you chose in the first step. Think about how the shapes and positions of these colors affect the mood as well. Thank you for joining me on this fun tour today. I had a great time exploring colors and moods in works of art with you. Today we looked at three works of art and used the artist's color palette to determine the mood of an artwork. We made color swatches of each artwork, which we used later as inspiration when creating our own work of art. You know, artists use colors in some interesting ways. When it was your turn to be the artist, you had the chance to play around with color as well. Now that we've learned about color and mood, look at some of the artwork that you can find around your house and see if you can guess the mood. What colors are used on your favorite cereal box or to make up your video games? Thanks again for joining me today. Until next time, remember that you too are an artist.